I wasn't happy that it had me to do it again, but then I thought, hey, uh, a good opportunity to uh, deal with myself over something that maybe I'm polluted on. And uh, so my neighbor and guesser was working pretty hard during the first half of this uh, session, gave me a bad time, as I was pretty sure I knew what the session was, and even just before I saw the feedback, I was wrong. So. Um, the second part of the session was done um, after I'd gotten up from my bed. The session had remained open for over a day, and the neighbor and guest had finally left me alone, and I think I did a little better on the second half. Um, in both cases, uh, both in 2009 and on this occasion, I complained I had poor sight contact. And uh, score-wise, the uh, second go-round was 5% lower on the score than uh, was the first time, but uh, that's not the end of all the all. So um, in the second half, I was getting what I perceived uh, disjointed words and phrases, and I wrote them out in quotations as phase sevens, and um, 
I've asked a friend of mine who has married a gal from northern China if she knows the phrase Shoban or Shoban or anything similar, and I have not got a response yet, so I'm still waiting on that. Um, that's pretty much it. I took the coordinates twice, and I got some sketches going pretty early. And I uh, actually did not did not address the parenting at all. I seem to have gone completely away from it and really never got out of uh, phase three sketching. So I didn't go into phase four and it really was flew in the face of my advanced training. So this has been kind of a trend for me in the last while, but I seem to be experiencing a little bit of broadening out even though the phases aren't developing for me like they ought to. That's about it for general remarks. Um, right here I'm noticing, I looked at your or your session just a, a little bit yesterday or day before. Um, P2, I'm on uh, your session, I'm sorry, this shows that I'm on page five on this. Yeah. But ba bass string sound and um, feeling bowed, feels like a bass string vibrating. And then uh, coming right up, you've got a pretty interesting sketch, which, oh, come back here. Can't use violin shape. And not having been at this, I was wondering if there's orchestra, if there might be an orchestra involved. But the sconce shape right there yeah. looks to me like a cello. You know, I have a friend who plays the cello. Yeah. reminded me of that. Um, uh, in the right-hand column, I said I thought it was doorknobbing on some kind of sconce shape. That's correct. And I was concerned it was commanding too much of my attention. But uh, I know they have classical uh, orchestras in Beijing. I just couldn't tell you if there was one there. having a mic. I mean, he's not a panelist. Only if panelists have mics. If someone recognizes they have a noisy computer fan, uh -huh. that's what I'm hearing. That would, it would seem to be me, although I've never had that problem before. Is that or it's Glenn, I can't tell. It's not me. Oh. I'm in a okay. totally quiet room here. Hmm. I can't figure out. If you heard that, that was my dog coming in and out. I'll tell you what, I'll mute me and just see if you can hear it now. It just went away. Oh, great. It's me. <laughs> but we still hear your voice. No, I actually never got it muted, but the sound just went away. Yeah. I don't hear it either. No, it's gone. It's clean. Sounds good. Okay. Open your computer and spit in the back, okay? <laughs> sure. Okay. Good grief. And I swear I didn't do a thing. I didn't even get it muted. I was thinking about it. I didn't even get there yet. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, so, well, that's better anyway. Um, so, Lynn, do you have anything that you want to jump in with? He's, uh, David's fighting pollution because he knew he'd already worked his target, and uh, he left his session open longer than he wanted on a break, which he didn't like. And uh, he says he feels like he didn't, he thought he didn't have good site contact. So do we put him in the, in the bowl with everybody who thinks they did a lousy job and they're getting good stuff? No, um, uh, when uh, when you realized you had done the session before, did you remember what the session was, or do you have it just uh, marked? 
Uh, I, well, I'll tell you what, all my sessions are sound in three ring binders. Um, and uh, the feedback is uh, stored with the session. Now, I did not open the binder. Uh, I only checked that the tab oh, showed okay, that I was on the session um, before. What's going to happen, and in fact, this is some really great training. Um, when you see that you've done a session before, uh, and in fact, many times we would say, okay, the coordinates are and ended in a two so that the person would realize they've done this session before. Yeah. That's when you get good practice at uh, fighting AOLs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because boy. You find, you know, you find the color. Oh, I know what target that was, and then you find the shape. Oh no, it was this other target, and so on. And um, and this is one of the hardest types of AOLs because what you're trying to do is identify which target it was that you've already done, and it's really good training to say, I don't know which target it was. And why don't I just get a descriptor and write it down and not even worry about it until the uh, summary? Yeah. If you don't, you're going to wind up fighting yourself all the way through the entire session. The, uh, the out for me was being half awake. <laughs> 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 and that's how I finished out the session. I was not exactly myself at the time, which worked beautifully. <laughs> But uh, uh, I was certain that there was a, a Mexican-American gentleman at this, and he was wearing a woven straw hat that was vented just above the hat band. And uh, I knew that was wrong, but darn it, if I could get rid of that idea. So, well, uh, it should have been wrong. Uh, <laughs> you know, just because it's not in the feedback doesn't mean it's wrong. <laughs> no, that's true. So... Um, the, uh, some of my uh, quarreling did appear in the summary, but I did lean heavily on the second half for uh, perceptions. Uh, page uh, 7 uh, showed some um, columnars that were uh, marble, and uh, I got some feathering going on there with my pencil crayon. But as I looked at the women with their arms ranged in the air, they have very alabaster skin and it's somewhat pinkish, although there's no feathering going on. So um, I was kind of pleased with that. Yeah. But I don't know if you saw the note I typed in there, Shoban, yes. which is the way you spelled it with an S-A-O instead of S-H-O. Yeah. Uh, Shoban is the Gaelic word for grace. Oh, my gosh. As in graceful. Well, that certainly would describe the target. Yeah. Huh. You're not Gaelic, are you? <laughs> uh, I don't think I know any Gaelic. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Aaron Gobras. <laughs> Aaron Gobras is as much Gaelic as I know. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Okay. I tried. I researched that word. I didn't try Gaelic, so. A friend of mine is married a gal from northern China, and I've asked on email if she recognizes anything approximately like that, and I don't have a response yet. Hmm. Okay. Thanks, David. And uh, hmm. thank you for discussing uh, P5 with us, with us tomorrow evening. We'll be back again at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. So. Oh, you're welcome. All right. Anything else we want to cover about this session? Looking okay. good. Uh, yeah, I I think you experienced, you know, fighting yourself all the way through this thing, uh, which is actually a good thing. Um, when you fight yourself, you always win, you always lose. <laughs> well, so. Yeah. Um, well, I did, uh, I did recognize this was the first time I had so much difficulty with myself. Yeah. In session. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we used to, uh, we would give somebody a target, and then the next day we would give them the same practice target and, you know, not tell them. 
and they would all the way through it. Oh, I think I'm missing the target. I think I'm getting yesterday's target, and so on. Well, then the third day, we'd give them the same target again, and they would fight themselves all the way through it. And then the fourth day, we would give them a different target, and they would sit there thinking, I wonder if they're going to give me the same target on the fourth day. No, they wouldn't do that. Yes, they would. And, you know, uh, just fight themselves all the way through it. And finally, we would just have to say, look, you may have had this target before. Maybe you didn't. You don't know. Just go ahead and view. View the target. Yeah. And uh, and get that guessing out of your mind, because that guessing is what kills you. One technical question, then. Uh, when I write out the coordinates, 060802, I begin with my viewer number. And ordinarily, I would write 011, indicating this is the first time that I've done this session yeah. and the first time today. Now, as this was a uh, repeat, uh, after my viewer number, what is the correct number sequence, knowing that I've done this target before? If you know you've done the target before, it would be um, zero, um, zero 01, like if it's your first session of the day, it'd be zero 01. But then it would be a two. Okay, thank you. Because it's the second time you've had this target. Yeah, I got that backwards. Thank you. I just uh, switched over so we could see at least three examples of different dance troops. So. Well, oh, this is dance competition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So when you guys start viewing the event. You could, each of you, be choosing a different section of dancers completely with different backdrops and different activities. So good luck with searching for feedback is all I have yeah. to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Jen's the main thing here. is the, uh -huh. the activity and the location are still, be, are still the same. Uh, Russ is here, so we'll go over his... Um, he is coming along from somebody who only worked from notebook sketches before, and he still has some lingo that's a little strange to me, but he's getting purposes, and hang on, I think we can do better. Here we go. Um, he's scoring, using your score sheet. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He didn't have any session sketches to share this time. And instead of just probing a notebook sketch that is huge and intricate, he's getting a reporting mechanism down. And here he's got red gold and China came to mind. So that he has a lot of perceptions. If you look at them individually, he yeah. can score them. So for anybody who's here that CRV structure, it's, you know, kind of foreign language for them. Yeah. But again, if you look at each perception individually. And, you know, up there at the very start, he's got stage lighting. Uh -huh, let me now, he may not have meant it. He may have uh -huh. meant, you know, like as stage lighting in a room or something like uh -huh. that. But, um it's hard to break down a score without using the format from the score sheet from the start. And he's going to, um, he's still working towards reformatting to use it. And he had 135 perceptions, 119 were scorable, 16 were unknown. He got 107 yeses. It's not shabby at all. Gives him something, he has a measuring tool that he didn't have a month or so ago. Yeah, and like I say, in the military unit, us professionals, we had a uh, we had just an average score of uh, seventy two point eight percent. So he's doing better than we ever did, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, he's, he's no doing mean. better than we averaged. <laughs> gotcha. Did they use that scoring mechanism when you model? No. Okay. Not until I got there and set up the database and uh, set up the scoring methodology and, and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
Russ, I know that I usually take your mic off and you uh, usually text. So I'm looking over here to see if you have any comments. Marco is telling us in the background warm greetings from Iceland. And thanks to Russ for doing some extra sleuthing on feedback. He's usually so curious when we finish up here, he um, looks for search engine stuff. And in this instance, he found a link with YouTube dancing, probably 10 different groups at least. And uh, that's why I thought, well, there's no research in this thing. Not like we did one with the castle. Yeah, but uh, usually, like the YouTube videos of an event, mm -hmm. make really, really good uh, feedback because they have the motion, they have the energy, and the sounds, and everything else. Uh, I have found that when I put them onto the uh, onto our website for feedback, uh, it makes it just a horrible download for a lot of people. You know, when they bring the site up, uh, the, a lot of people who are still on phone lines and all that, uh, it just makes it a really miserable download for them. Uh, Russ says his computer's frozen and um, says he has no sound. So I'm just going to type in here, uh, Russ, we think you're doing a great job improving. Very happy for him that he's able to do some growing and learning here. Um, he said no. As far as I don't think he has any comments. He decided to says he wrote everything down. Okay, so Russ, I'm talking out loud in case maybe your sound came back. Um, if you have comments, please just type them in and we'll pick them up. And I'm so sorry that you don't have any sound. I have mic issues all over the place tonight. All right. And today everybody's busy trying to get ready for um Irva, so we didn't have many sessions to look at tonight. And we have two more people who aren't here. So here we go. And I think we have a basic viewer here. And we have. Oh boy, 23 pages. All right. Um, no, I never dropped him an email about maybe he listened to it though. He's not leaving much space between his um, ideograms. And he's okay. Organic water, land, more land. Oh, went out of uh, phase two, or he's in phase two. He's had enough of taking coordinates. 
are you guys all able to, I put this so that you're all synced with me, but are you able to scroll through these sessions and roam around at will? No, we can scroll through one page, the one page you're showing. Okay. And then when you show another page, we can scroll we can up scroll and down on it, but yeah. that's it. Like the sketch going there, an AI, familiar dark feeling, or if he's a dancer. I always make the mistake of trying to use a roller ball on my mouse. Have it. He's labeling his sketches and probing. Just making structure comments for, we have people here. Uh, Kristen is with us and she is trying to get back into viewing. Oh, and also I have to switch back to desktop and pop and look at Janine's sketch or say, session. She's here. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to forget. So anyway, I'm talking kind of mumbling out loud because uh, Kristen's here and she's trying to get back into viewing. Hasn't done it for quite some time, but she has a successful book and has been giving interviews and on radio shows and she's been quite busy in her not CRV world. Good book, by the way. Yes, it is. Um, in those videos you just commented on, YouTube videos, um, when we viewed the target, maybe I shouldn't be talking about it here because other people haven't worked it yet, but uh, Russ picked up a huge structure and we thought it was the steeple on the church and there was actually a big tower along the route and it was in one of those videos and it matched his sketch. Well, we got a lot of sketches here. Any comments on anything making sense at all? I know we need to get to the summary, but I always like to look at structure yeah. and We learned the P5 comments that you put in for us. Looks like he must have taken a break. I, I missed that. Did he declare a break or just get more site contact? He wrote resume, so he may have, he probably declared a break. break. And I hate to just jump right to the summary for like Cindy is, is just beginning her CRV studies and she learns things just from listening to us talk. So if we don't go over these, anything that we might have to say, she'll, you know, people like her miss out on too. Do you have a good feel that is he on target? can't decide here. It could be noticed there where he had the AI uh -huh. is where he identified himself at the target. You know, it's on the right side of me. Uh -huh. And when you spatially relate to the target, that's, that's the AI. Right. You're, you're basically just dropping yourself in right at the target. really keen on structure things and location. It's a pretty intricate event. Well, yeah, intricate, ornate, uh, you know, uh -huh. the event itself was just nothing but activity, ornate uh -huh. uh, decorations. Uh -huh. Fancy, graceful movements and 
and so on. Culture thing. Was a, was a very busy target. Uh huh. Unless he had kind of a little S curve scroll there. I'm not picking up anything like an instrument the way uh, David did. All right, interim summary. Sometimes interim summaries can help you anchor yourself at the target, too. Would you like to comment on that, Lynn? Uh, well, it's just a way of sort of clearing the baggage. When you, uh, you know, when you're working a session, a lot of times you don't realize that you're carrying a lot of excess baggage along with you, things that you haven't, you've perceived but you haven't declared and so on. And so doing an interim summary like this, uh, just let you sort of blat, you know, put all of that uh, baggage down, and then when you come back from the summary, you you have a lot easier time. And uh, as you start writing your summary, you're going to remember some of the things that you perceived but didn't declare. And so you just go ahead and write them down, and that sets that excess baggage that you're carrying uh, down onto the paper and gets rid of it. And a lot of it, too, will be things that the minute you start writing it down, you'll realize that's not there, and so it lets you throw away that baggage. An interim summary is a, is a very good habit to get into. And I see that when he started to sort through his perceptions, if you look at them individually, um, he has, says it has a Russian feeling. But, um, you know, a lot of these things are there. Uh, bright colors, far north, vast space, looks like chili. I don't know about that. Um, but languages and good mood, enjoying, happy, resourceful. He's queuing with purpose. Oh, somebody probably wants some money for something. Um, yeah, but this is the time of evening I get to, can you donate twos? Or we have a new um, political office in town. And um, are you coming to our thing? Like, oh, for heaven's sake. Will you please take me off your calling list? Yeah, the national don't call list doesn't seem to hold any water anymore. I think somebody hacked it. Okay. It's getting a lot of good descriptors here. The individual ones. Far East feeling like Far East Russia. Yeah. Which, by the way, is Oriental. A lot of, um, there's a word I'm trying to go for regarding the dancing. It's not culture. Okay, we're winding down here. I don't know if you fixated on just one of the specific groups. Because it's like we said, moving in circles. I bet they were. Yeah. I was noticing on the land, uh -huh. I've seen a lot of people who have done this target have seen the results, and they will say the land is outdoors or indoors or extremely dark, which it is, you know, uh -huh. but almost without exception, they have the word smooth in there. And I was noticing he got the word smooth in there. The land, in this case, of course, is the stage. Yeah, I was going to say, they're using the gestalt for land versus 
yeah. what we would think of as a field or yeah. just being land. Well, that's what you want to use as descriptors. This is landy. You know, this has landiness to it. Mm -hmm. you, you want to stay away from those nouns because they'll, well, as soon as a person says the land is smooth, they almost always say it's grassy because smooth land is grassy, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not where I live, yeah, it's not. Know, but, <laughs> I was going to say, you wouldn't want it to be smooth sand or you know, smooth whatever. Um, do you happen to know where this competition was held? It was in Beijing, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, like what facility or whatever? No, I didn't find that out. Yeah. Ross and I were kind of just trying to look. Okay, here's Jed's session, and then I'll switch over to desktop and we'll look at Janine. And let's see. And I'm not sure why, but every time you switch to a new one, uh -huh. the magnification comes up to 189%. Oh. And if you, well, for people watching, or it does on mine anyway, for people watching, if you click on the little arrow right beside that, uh -huh. you can change it back to 100% and you can see the whole page at once. When I do that on my screen for the recording, let's see. I see the whole screen on mine. Okay, it may be something WebEx that it's it's easier to read if it's at the default 189%. Uh-huh. But you don't see the whole page that way. Now I was just uh, scroll up and down. Yeah, all I was trying to do was go down to the zoom button to see. My options go from 100 to 200 to 400, so, and I'm set on 100 right now, which shows only half my page, two-thirds of my page is the session, and I've got a huge white board off to the right. Yeah. All right, so anyway, um, Jed just realized in his um, practicing that he wasn't uh, doing his P3 sketches that were op in optimal, he was um, listing his perceptions and he was getting his, to where they thought they fit in the sketch. So he's, I haven't had a chance to look at this to see what his sketch looks like this time. He's getting a lot of colors. He never used to get colors either. Did you see we've gone to P3? Is there an AI in there any place? I didn't see one. Oh, now it's jumping on me. This thing is very touchy. There we go. AI, it's in front of me. Warm, cozy, safe. It's like warm again, but I mm. can't quite make that out. All right, now we've got a sketch. I asked him to look at your article in Eight Martinis regarding sketching, too, because uh, he used to have three sketches or three lines. It would look like one going across, it was horizontal and kind of wavy, and then a couple of vertical sticks with flags in them like golf, like a golf course. So he's trying to expand his sketches. And that article, I haven't read it for a while, but it was a good resource, I remember. You get a lot of stray cats here. That's okay. Uh, yeah. Just noticing. Just I, to noticed, 
Mm, go ahead. Yeah, every time he gets a noun, he sets it aside as a stray cat, and that's that's golden practice. I mean, that is really good. Mm -hmm. I have to wonder what you said with David's. Uh, we'll talk about it tomorrow night. Um, Wurlitzer. Uh, now I have to wonder every time I see a stray cat, what all's packed into that thing. Well, uh, take a look at this, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, continued. Uh, open. Uh, can't read that. Tan. Close or close. Is it bridged? Well, that's what I would say, but it's kind of. Cold, freezing. And then look at the stray cat. Uh, the refrigerator. Oh, refrigerator. Okay. I thought it was religious. Okay. Um, yeah, then this well, is... Well, actually, it might. Yeah. I'm thinking it's refrigerator. Yeah, I think it's refrigerator. Yeah. Uh, then this would be just a normal stray cat where you pack all these things together and say, oh, therefore, it must be a refrigerator. Uh, if it were something like cold, freezing, stray cat religious... Uh-huh you would automatically know that between the word freezing and the word religious, something had happened in his mind that didn't get written down. And that's how you can tell that it's time to do a P5 and break out everything that's in that, that should be written down in that white space. <laughs> There's something I was going to ask you or say. Um, seems like P5 in my head here. Oh, I know. In his, excuse me, in his email to me, he said that he wondered if the uh, Chinese had turned the air conditioning on because he kept getting so much cold. Well, that could be. I mean, with all those dancers on the stage, yeah. yeah. They're, they're bound to have that, yeah. And I don't know what time of year it was either. Maybe it was cold outside, which yeah. they don't have the heat up. Russianese, Russian easy. I think he's saying Russian like. Yeah. Russian -y. Um. Oops, I'm looking over that comment to see if. Okay, Cindy's stepping out. She'll be back. Mountain top, Spanish. All right, move command. He was asking me how this should look in structure. Mentally touch my ear to the target. What do I hear? Softness whispers, quietness, liquidness. I'm trying to make out that last word. And he's trying out these move commands. Mentally feel what is at the target. What do I feel? Oop. We're stuck on whispers and softness and quietness. It's okay. We're feeling the noise. And now we're, what do I see? He sees blue. Um, uh, what do you think? Uh, and I'm not reading this in, but um, Stray Cat, it reminded him of waves. I'm imagining their arms going up and down in synchronicity. Oh, yeah. And yeah. So that would be a wave-like motion. Like he's not yeah, saying yeah. that. He's not no. saying that. No, but uh, if you go back to that page a minute. Uh-huh. Let me find it. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, for those that aren't into the structured CRV specifically, uh, when you give yourself a command like this, mentally touch my ear to the target, what do I hear? That requires an answer. It's not like a regular cue where you say sounds or something like that, where you're just poking yourself in the ribs and anything can come through. But he's specifically saying, what do I hear? And uh, uh, the uh, answers will come through. And this type of question is always sensory, okay, mentally feel, mentally look, mentally listen, and all that. It's always to do with the, with some of the senses, even if it's just, you know, mentally kick the target and describe what happens, something like that. It's always physical in nature. It requires an answer. And if you ever get to the point where you just feel like you're just all over the target and you can't get yourself organized, this is a beautiful way to get yourself organized. And it's a it's a tool that will help you organize yourself, pull yourself together at the target, and start interacting with the target in such a way that you will get specific responses to specific questions. So what he's doing here uh, is a great tool for everybody to learn, whether they do CRV or some other form of RV. It really works and it helps you get your sea legs at the target and it helps you kind of place yourself firmly there so that you can start looking around in an organized manner. It's a really good tool to use and it's a tool everybody needs to learn. All right, now he's cued himself with purpose. Entertainment. Mm -hmm. yeah. And work. Yeah. Definitely that. Yeah. And very good. The land has asked with hard, soft, rubbery, cold. And he's just cold every place. He's frigid mm -hmm. and white and bluish, warm and freezing. Maybe some of them have skimpy outfits on and they were freezing. Hard to manage. Biological aspects has aspects of yelling, screaming, frigid, cold. He looked up buffalo to see what that meant, sent me in an email. And what did it mean? No, I skimmed it. I think because I haven't scored this with him and gotten back to him, which yeah. is one of my students. I think for him it was pretty much the standard um, what am I trying to say myself? When you're buffaloed, it's like you've had the wool pulled over your eyes, you are being fooled by somebody, not bowled over. I think he was trying to differentiate those two. Yeah. That's generally what it means in slang, yeah. Uh, Buffaloes also live in herds, mm -hmm. and so that could have been, who knows, you know, on this one. We're not the ones that can tell what this means. It would have to be him because he had the impression. Uh -huh. um, another thing would be like overwhelmed or nonplus. Like, I don't know, that's maybe a bit of a stretch. But, I mean, this was a massive event, so to pull it off, you know, it could be kind of like, whoa. Sense of comfort, coolness, freezing, helter-skelter, disorganization, like whipping or tossing to and fro. Well, there's a lot of movement in, you know, with all the props and everything, so. Here we go. The rest of the feedback. Okay. 
Wow, that was a long one. And he has scored it at 83%. Not shabby. Yeah, I'm already catching some uh, flack about uh, my proposed registry, as I'm calling it, or network, or whatever it ends up being. Like, oh, really? Whatever. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Who's I'm giving you flack over it? What? Who's giving you flack over it? Oh, I've got postings on about six boards. Oh. <laughs> just to announce it. And so uh, I'm not taking any of it to heart. Just going to let them start do their talking. And I told them I would explain it when I explain it. So, and if they don't want to participate, then and if they're listening to this, then they'll understand. You know, if you want a plumber, you want a plumber who knows what the heck they're doing, and so you have to be able to measure how the plumber knows what the heck they're doing. I would seriously imagine. I would seriously imagine that the first guy to ever build a house, mm -hmm. the people in the caves came out and said, "You want to live in a dead tree?" Good point. <laughs> yeah, you know, we'd still be living in caves if everybody listened to the criticism. Yep. Okay. Let's find Janine. And Janine has, she even wrote us a thank you note, which I posted on our list. Um, that she's thanking us for having these little get togethers. She came and first one and didn't think she'd done diddly and amazed herself and signed up for like the next three. Good. So let me see. Darn it, I didn't see. This really is a good thing to bring you guys back for mics. I don't think Janine has a mic. Let me just double check. So she, oh, she does. Janine? At least I gave her one. Maybe she doesn't really have one. Well, Janine, you are not muted. I don't see any little broadcast thingies. But feel free to, I'm texting. I'm going to go back to sharing my desktop again. Sorry about that. Mike does not appear to be working well. Um, feel free to text in, okay? And here is your session. And um, PO, so you got distractions. Worried about the list of things coming tomorrow. I see you have a sketch here right at the beginning. Makes me wonder. You know, I don't know what methodology you use or. If you're a natural, but um, you have a sketch coming in right there in the beginning. I don't know if it was early or if that's just part of your recording. And oh yeah, I remember I looked at your the three documents that you sent. You're all over the place. And I think I can bring up maybe more than one of hers at once. Maybe we'll see. Yeah. And we'll just get them all up here. So here's. I seem to get the same stuff each time I go back. Uh -huh. This is a good thing, by the way. <laughs> Train start over fire, okay. Fire trees burning in throat and lungs. Um, mm -hmm. If I can point out another thing. Sure. Um, I know that this target was done this last week, okay? But the event, well, the target date on this one is the 2nd of August, 2006. And if you look, at the uh, feedback, the event happened on the 17th of August, 2006, 15 days later than it was tasked. And that the subconscious can pick up on things like that. And um, one of the reasons I did this was to see how well uh, people could jump back and forth through time. 
and uh, it seems to have worked. But this. Uh, well, I was going to ask, did we like pull this one? You know, because sometimes we will challenge ourselves and we'll all work a session and then we'll have you flip a coin at your house and pull something out of an envelope and see how well we did. So, huh, you actually did a little trick with this, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't like, do it. To, yeah. You know, this was done back on back in uh, uh, I think 2000. And, well, it was done in September, I think, of uh, of 2006, and I was catching up, and I actually did a uh, put a target date on it that was uh, 15 days earlier than the actual event, and um, I. I think it shows how people can jump back and forth and back and forth through time. And, uh, and you know, this is one of the important things to learn uh, about uh, the mind, the subconscious mind, is that time is one of the easiest things to, to manipulate when it comes to uh, remote viewing. And once you get that assurance, and once you get that understanding that time don't matter, <laughs> you know, the, the logical linear time that we consciously think in doesn't apply to remote viewing, it frees you up an awful lot. Um, just talking out loud, can't say, but... Um we know those dancers and their props and and everything. And here we've got, you know, male who is, person puts their arm up, male who is attacking, swirling winds, causing people to fight one another. And I know that that's, I'm getting some Japanese overtones with that, that uh, with geisha and samurai and stuff like yeah. that. But I'm just thinking about all these different scenarios that the dancers could have been. And look at the, uh, I don't see what page it is, uh, the center one on your screen, mm -hmm. look down at the bottom, mm -hmm. okay, this to me would make me wonder whether uh, this is a symbolic sketch of the star, I wonder if she had done this in color, what color she would have made that star. Uh, and the helicopters and all that, you know, um, this is what the press kind of pushes is the militaristic nature of the Chinese government and all that. Yeah. So I wonder if this sketch is simply symbolic, telling her, hey, it's Chinese. Well, I was going to say the Chinese flag is yeah. a huge, it's a big red star. Yeah. Isn't it? Or a red yeah. background and a white star? What color is a star? I'm supposed to know the answer to that, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, because I was like, I should know the answer to that. And I'm sure their flag is big and red. I worked, I, the, I worked the Russian desk. I didn't work the Chinese desk. <laughs> we can Google that if we want to. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, look at the, her... A lot of space, dark, very bright light, movement, and something like stars in this one. Hey. Yeah. I'd go with that. Yep. I was going to say, now I can't stand it. Just for a split second, we're going to look up Chinese flag. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> yellow for a reason. Is it yellow? Stars there we go. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh -huh. A lot of stars in that. Four. Multiple. I'll go with multiple. Of course, this okay. this borders on us doing a lot of waffling, too. I know. She, she would have to be the final authority on it. Right. Okay, let's see what I can keep and what kind can I get rid of here. That can go. That can go. I have a lot of windows open. 
Okay. Um, well, that is all of the sessions that I have to review. Does anybody have any questions? We're 9.30. For us, that's not doing too bad. A lot of our regular folks are not here. So general question and answers, we can take, oh, there we go. David has a question. Go ahead, sir. You are not muted. Okay, Teresa, thank you. Um, I was just commenting that the uh, star on the red flag was yellow, but you've since found that, so. Gotcha. Um, oh, Kristen says, uh, commenting, actually the hand sort of replicates stars. And say, Kristen, I just took your mic off. Can you, uh, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, I can. Oh, my heavens. Okay. This uh, computer amazes me. Other than your comment that you typed in, did you uh, have anything else you wanted to say? Um, no, I'm sorry. I came in late. I was lost in the book and lost the time, and I didn't do the target. I just felt too insecure about knowing what to do, but hopefully next time. That's okay. You told me in an email that you were going to come back tonight and try and get a handle on structure again and get back into it. Yeah. So I've just been finding it interesting. Unfortunately, I have to take the pooch out. Okay. Well, we'll let you take the pooch out. No, I just came back in. Oh, did, oh I see. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Do you have any questions about starting out or anything at all? Um, you know, I feel so insecure about it. I don't want to take everyone's time because I feel like I really have to take basic all over again. It's free, uh, Lynn. Go ahead, Lynn. It's free for you, Lynn. Yeah, I would like to do it sometime when I can... Uh, Get out there. Um, actually, Lori is coming to Ohio. When? Uh, you probably want to email her. She has two or three classes coming up. Oh, thank you. And I think one south and one north. All right. All right. I will email her. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, I know we've got reverb. Sorry. I just... Uh, took her mic off. We're getting feedback through her speakers. And let's see. Uh, Graham is putting in that he did a session two minutes before the webinar and set. And see if I can find it and we can take a look. Uh, Graham, I don't see any um, attachments. I have some perceptions in an email. Let's see. Okay, Graham, your mic is enabled. I have an email with some perceptions. Did you ha send an attachment? No, just texting. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let me see what I can do here. Well, easiest way to do this is probably go back to sharing my desktop. And here we go. And he has perceptions of black, white, tan, water, ice, flow, compartments, tubes, hands, cultural practice, secretive, and there's a tall person there. Okay. So with texting, let me see if I can bring that up so I can see. Okay. Go ahead, Graham, if you want to text anything in about your session. 
I think, are you basic, as I recall? And Marco had typed a note in that he thinks he's hit a slump. Maybe we should let him talk to see if he has some questions. At least Jay had a second to, to work the session. That's good, Grant. So if you were to score these perceptions, um, were there things black at the target? Yes. White? Yes. Tan? Probably. There are so many colors. Water? Uh, I can't say that I saw any. There probably is some places. They're probably thirsty, but anyway, can't say that I saw any water. Uh, I've, had water re I've had water reported for this side a lot of times. Mm -hmm. I think it's their mistake in the motion, for the, the rhythmic waves. motion for the, for the water, yeah. Oh. But it's it's very common on this one to get water reported. Huh. And the ice, I still have to, I don't know that region. I still have to wonder if it's winter there. Um, well, it'd be indoors anyway. I mean, you know, Yeah. they've got the bare legs and the belly button sticking out. So, uh, you know, uh -huh. it's, uh, it's indoors. So uh -huh. it's uh, climate controlled in there. Yeah. You know, though, I wonder for effects, and I know we're waffling, we're just talking about out loud, but like dry ice and, uh, you know, you can use that for effects. But, yeah. Um, and tubes and hands, you know they have all the, all the um, like using silk and like streamers and what have you, cultural practice, uh, secretive, maybe. A tall person? Yeah, there probably are some tall people there. Um, and the feedback people. even states that this is cultural, mm -hmm. you know, from the different subcultures. The dance yeah. is from the different subcultures. Graham says that was just a brief freestyle session, and he kind of thinks he was Excuse made... Excuse me a mostly, minute, I'll be back. Okay, mostly AOLing. Uh, well, not always. Oh. Got a fair amount of stuff that uh, would be scored yes there. Okay. Now let me see. Where is Marco? Well, hopefully he's awake over there in Iceland. Marco, good morning. Are you awake? Oh, noises. He had his feet up, now they've hit the floor. Marco? You always have questions, and if you're in a slump, maybe we can answer a couple. Yeah, hello. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Or is uh, it night? How, what time is it? Good morning, yeah. It's pretty late. Pretty late. I'm trying to stay awake. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Somebody so has to do it. <laughs> um, I, I'm just trying to trying to formulate my question, but yeah, I I feel like uh, I'm uh, in a small slump. Uh huh. But uh, I I heard it's uh, it's natural that uh, this is this is a way that it happens. I think uh, I heard it from Lynn. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, it's like a like a wave. You go up, you go down, you go up again. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. 
so I just I uh, just have to work through it. And uh just and not to keep practicing. Up. Yeah, I keep uh, practicing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's um, the free P word, then. Huh? Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. You said that um, you didn't think you were ready for intermediate, that you needed to put more sessions into the database. Yes. Um, kind of keep an eye on it because you've been doing this enough that maybe mm -hmm. your subconscious is ready to move on, but only you can tell. So. Well, I, I think, you know, basically... The viewer is in control of the session, so That's right. I think I, I, I think I, I think I, I know a little bit more. If I feel like this, then uh, uh, then uh, I think I have to do a little bit more work, just uh, uh, more basic work. Yeah. And otherwise, I'm just uh, wrestle, wrestling with the. Uh, with the stray cats and uh, AOLs. <laughs> yeah, but Marco, wrestling with them will toughen you. Oh. And so, uh, we tend to think when we have trouble with the remote viewing that this is a bad thing, but usually it's not. Usually you're in the process of learning a lesson, and even when you have a, a session that, you know, you think, well, I need to hide this under the house or bury it six feet deep somewhere. You look at it and you say, what did I just learn about myself? Mm. And what did I just learn from this session? And if you can come away having learned something, it's a good session. Mm -hmm. I don't care what your score was. Mm. I, I, I totally agree. I actually have to uh, cultivate this good habit uh, yeah. in, this, in this way. Uh, not uh, not uh, going for the numbers always. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing. You know, the purpose of a practice session is not to learn something about the target. It's mm -hmm. to learn something about yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because uh, I, I did the session, but I, I was too late to, to send it away. But... Uh, it was uh, again, uh, again, quite, quite, uh, quite, uh, quite a battle with uh, with uh, Spreka. and uh, I think this is probably uh, it looks like a slump, you know, I'm just uh, just da dancing with the Spreka. Well, the thing is, when you go into a slump like that, everybody does. Mm. The important thing to realize is that a slump will last for so many sessions, and then you come out of it. Unless you quit. No, no quit. I won't quit. Yeah, if you quit in a, in a slump, you never come out of it. Yeah, that's true. You stay stick there, stuck there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's interesting, uh, I just noticed like this uh, this basic, uh, this kind of uh, strong sensory like EOCA. Um, I, I had, uh, you know, where, you know, blue and, uh, blue and black. And then I had this AI impact, also this kind of uh, very white, uh, not very white, but like in the first picture you see, it's a little, quite, a little bit white, illumi illuminated mm -hmm. picture, like a strong effect. But, uh, but uh, I just take a, take your book that way. But I, I I have been just noticing other things also to uh, doing more more of this work. I uh, fear we work. Uh, but uh, oh. I think I wrote also in the email list like uh, some kind of all the uh, you know emotional issues have gone up or have erased, risen up, and uh, that that's a quite new thing mm -hmm. for me. Some old projects and stuff like that, <laughs> but I thought that for a long time that I had already um, taken care of. Marco, I have had a little bit of a busy week. I don't remember you sending me a session for this target, did you? 
No, I, I said uh, I, I beat the target, but I'm too late to send it. Okay, just making sure. Uh, okay. Um, Maybe some, somebody else can talk. I just go through my session again. Okay. Thanks for being here. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Get some sleep. I feel like I should pat you on the head. <laughs> well, he is the age of my kids, you know. So. All right. And um, David has his hand in the air. I don't know if that's a holdover from before. Oh, and Cindy has her hand up. David, I just took your mic off mute. Did you have another question? Uh, no, I did not. I think that's old news now. Okay. And Cindy has her hand in the air. Go ahead. Um, Cindy, general question, okay? General questions work. I can hear you typing. You, can you talk? How do we deal with people? Them? Oh, there you go. How do you deal with the more mind bending aspects of viewing? Like, oh my God, I worked the target and I just described something halfway around the world, like that kind of thing? Um, it if can you're be. talking about dealing with in session, we, she and I haven't gotten there yet. She just signed up for basic. So go ahead, Lynn. Oh, well, Cindy is asking, you know, how do you deal with, with the uh, fact that you can send your mind around the world and, and access other people's thoughts and all that. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great thing once you think of it, but one of the things you have to realize is that it's going to change your paradigms. It's going to change the... the uh, sometimes the basis that you've built a life on. <laughs> and uh, uh, so... You know, you have to you have to stand in awe of your own mind, but many times you have to give up some old cherished beliefs that your grandfather had or something, you know, and uh, and was passed down subliminally through the family to you. So uh, um, it changes you. You can. Yeah. I'm sorry to break in there. Uh, no. Was reading That's what I was you. trying to fish for. If she was going for a structure question that we haven't begun to cover yet, or if it's this paradigm shift. Yeah, um, you're wrestling with making some big changes in how I see the world. Unfortunately, yeah, I kind of think it's like um, when Ellie in uh, oh, help me, what's the movie? Contact. When Ellie like traveled through the wormhole, I'm okay to go, I'm okay to go, and when she came out on the other end and came back, you know, she saw things completely differently. Yeah. Like she's not in the box anymore, and you're not in Kansas anymore. The box looks different from the outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, uh, kind of. I mean, it's a it can get, I won't say rocky or rough, it can at times, but um, you can go through a lot of aha moments. The first time I ever was introduced to remote viewing for a week afterward, uh, this hopefully won't offend anybody, cursing a little bit, but I was on this roller coaster of, Oh my God, I worked the target. How cool is that? <laughs> and it's like, oh my God, I worked the target. Now what am I going to do? What do I do with this? What's that mean? You know, and it was, it really was this horrible roller coaster. 
And, of course, nobody in my world knew anything about remote viewing. That was my problem. I kept trying to ask and ask and ask all these people, and I hadn't met Lynn yet, and nobody knew anything. So then I had to make a decision, and that's how I ended up signing up for training. But, yeah, it was kind of a little mind blower. And yeah, and there, there are peripheral questions to it, too, like, uh, okay, I can find out any information in the world, and you pick up a newspaper and you say, and you read the headlines, this kid is missing, where is the kid? And you have to say to yourself, am I responsible now for the answer? You know, and, uh, and you have to... Uh, uh, you have to change a lot of your whole ideas about your life, your span of time here on the planet, and what you're supposed to do in it, and what you're not supposed to do, and yeah. um, and the object of ethics comes into it. Uh, you can't learn remote viewing without having to battle with ethics. It just you can't do it. And uh, if you do, uh, we don't want to hang out with you. <laughs> if you don't, rather. Yeah, if you don't, then uh, then you got problems. Yeah. Um, I don't know, something that you said there. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it makes you, it has made me want to make the most of the time that I'm here, you know? So, and that, what you said, too, brought up two things that you have talked about, you know, when we're in person on the e-group so much is the new viewer will inevitably, um, like, do a session for a friend or somebody out in the community and they haven't been asked to help find any information anybody from anybody or for anybody and now all of a sudden you've done a session, you know it's a good session, you know in your gut it's a good session and what do you do with the results? Yeah. You know, nobody asked you for them. You go running to law enforcement like you're all that in a bag of chips. Or, Look what I've got. Look what I've got. I can solve your case. We'll save the kid. And they're going to nod politely. And as soon as the door's shut, you know where your paperwork's going. Yeah. You don't know that because you still think you're saving the world. But, um, you know, it's one of those crazy psychics again. So they don't have any faith in us because they haven't been educated about it. So resist that temptation. Oh yeah, there was one student I had here who kept saying that he had a, there was a police case he wanted to work on in his hometown, and you know he had come here for the class, and I kept telling him, no, you are not a remote viewer yet. You need experience under your belt. You need to you know get yourself professionalized, and you need to you know. Uh, up your score and everything else and so sure enough he went home from the class from the basic class and the first day he was home he went into the police station and told them that he was there to solve all their crimes for them they could take, start taking uh, uh, you know vacations now and uh, of course he got booted out of the place yeah people. some people have to learn the hard way and uh, there was one gentleman who had never had any, you know, psychic clairvoyant experiences before, but he was not one of our students, but I've, this has been documented. He was positive that there was an airliner that was going to go down and all these people were going to die. And what should he, and he actually went to the FAA. If you Google this long enough, it'll come up. The FAA um, ended up believing him, taking him seriously, and there was an airliner that went down, but, you know, the odds are that may have happened anyway, but they couldn't begin to track it. They didn't. Which airport? Where do you start? And so it, that's an individual who had an experience on a nat in a natural way, but that's one of the things that you have to live with. I, that's one of the things that I was having so much um, slipping in time and precognitive experiences that I was, I stopped watching TV because I was afraid that that was going to happen to me. Like, you know, something's going to happen. Who do you tell? What do you do? And, um, you know, there's, 
it, is there something you can do about it? And so, anyway, studying CRV has helped quite a bit with straightening yeah. that around. And Cindy said here, ouch, I prefer to remain low key. Mm -hmm. Here again, you have ethics. If you know information, and even to protect yourself, you don't tell anyone, how ethical is that? You know, and, uh, you know, you know information and you do tell people, that may not be ethical either. And so, um, it's a, it, you're right, it's a quandary. And like I say, you cannot learn remote viewing without coming face to face with your own ethics. It's a, it's a life changing thing, it really is. I keep saying to everybody, you know, this is not a toy. It's really not. <laughs> yeah. And she voices concerns. And again, she has just barely even signed up. And um, uh, he, she says she sees that viewers say they can see or sense other people's thoughts. That gives her pause. Do I have the right to do that? Is it right to do that? Ah! I look at it this way. Um, remote viewing was developed to learn information that you can't get any other way. And part of that, it was for intelligence gathering, for military intelligence, and part of that was to learn the plans of intent and intentions of the enemy. We learn in structure about our thoughts, people at the site, their thoughts, and there are people out there learning the wrong way. They're being taught that they can remote view in six hours or less all the stages and all the phases. They don't have a clue why they're doing it, and they're not getting decent information, but they're getting a smidgen of information, and by yiminy, now they're a remote viewer. Yeah, and one of the things about controlled remote viewing, CRV, yeah. is that it's controlled. Um, you teach somebody to get other people's thoughts and they open their mind and they get thoughts from everybody and, you know, just a general, um, they can't focus down on one person. They may get one person and then that person's, you know, friend or something like that. And they start getting thoughts from everybody if they're after thoughts um, or they're going for, you know, just a target and they start getting everybody's thoughts at the site and all that. This is one of the reasons for the structure and for learning the structure. The structure has taught us how to control what we remote view so that we can zero in on one person or one person's thoughts or whatever. And, you know, like for plans and intentions of military or government leaders, you want to zero in on one person. Um, but uh, I have a lot of people who call me and they say, would you remote view me and see if I would be a good remote viewer? Well, no, I won't. Um, I don't want to get in your mind, you know. <laughs> for one thing, we had, um, there was an actual law against it for us in the military. Um, it was uh, Presidential Order 11905, which was superseded by 12333, that said that um, unless we had direction to do so from, uh, with, with uh, congressional approval, we would not remote view um, a U.S. citizen. And, um, and so they even passed laws to protect the U.S. citizens from the remote viewers. And um, I find it very distasteful to get into somebody's mind. I just refuse to do it. But That was your specialty, wasn't it? Well, it was my specialty, and so I kept getting tasked with it. Right. And even today, you know, if the person is, if it's the police and they're looking for a criminal and the plans and intentions, I still find it distasteful. And yet, if it will help save, li save lives, I do it. If it's not a crisis situation like that, then uh, I, shoot, their mind is their mind. Too much information. I don't want to get into it. Right. <laughs> And uh, and because I use 
CRV, controlled remote viewing, rather than just Joe Blow's form of remote viewing, I have the control that I can either get into a single mind or I can stay out of everybody's. And uh, this is one thing that I like about CRV. It gives you absolute control over your remote viewing. And as a newcomer, Cindy is voicing these questions, you're going to find out that when I came to this to study with Lynn, I avoided anything and everything that had the word telepathy attached to it because um, I thought that, you know, that's crazy. We lock people up for thinking like that. And I hate to tell you this, there are people out there who are born knowing how to do it, people who are learning remote viewing from books and DVDs, and um, I think the more of us who learn how to do it ethically and properly and not invading somebody's mind, but the fact that it can be done, we hold the standard bearer for those who don't understand that it's not the thing to do and that they think nothing of it. They really do. It's possible and they do it. And it's, this isn't talked about on the nightly news. And so, you know, it's a little bit of uh, dirty laundry there. Yeah, the, you know, power corrupts and ultimate power corrupts ultimately. Mm -hmm. And um, there are a lot of people who in their lives are very highly ethical and all that. Mm -hmm. But you give them the power mentally and they become basically men mental sociopaths. And, um, you know, get, they get drunk on the power and all. And um, this is one of the things I like about the controlled remote viewing is that uh, even when I'm tasked legally and all that with, uh, with getting into like the mind of a criminal to find out their plans and intentions. I have enough control that I can get into that part of their mind and wall off everything else that I don't want to know and, um, and it gives you control. And this is one of the reasons why I get out there and preach controlled remote viewing is not the same as remote viewing. Um, because controlled remote viewing is under your control. The remote viewing is controlled. And so that's why I get out there and preach this stuff. And in phase four, when we're working the SI column, for instance, you're asking what that per person feels about the site or the target, or you're actually just interviewing them. You're asking them questions and stuff, and you can do that without invading their mind. That's right. And I hate, I hate that word, invading. It's a bad word. Um, it's a good word. <laughs> it, yeah, but it, um, Well, it's very descriptive of what happens when you... Right. We don't like it. ...join with somebody else. You're invading them. You're invading right. their privacy. Right. And um, like I said, it, this isn't talked about on the nightly news, and it's real. And there are a whole lot of people out there learning it, and I consider us the folks wearing the white hats. And it's not that they're all wearing black hats. It's they're not that they're bad. It's just that they don't have all the theory and the control and the ethics behind what we're doing. And so somebody has to be the standard bearers. And I think that that's part of our role. Um, and... Yeah, and Cindy, actually, most of us feel the same way you do, and we don't do that. Yeah. Um, By the way, just to move off that topic a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, Mike Shinneberry called me the other day, and he uh, has gotten the uh, Encyclopedia of UFO, or the UFO Encyclopedia, or whatever it is. And um, he called, and he said that my picture was in it. The picture is where I look just exactly like uh, um, George Clooney. And um, he said that under it, it says that uh, I was a remote viewer and that remote viewing is out-of-body travel, which was inspired by um, Indian rites 
<laughs> you know, Native Indian rights and, and all that. The guy Are you is the author of this encyclopedia? Uh, I think it's somebody Barnes or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I can see but, how knowledgeable they are. Oh man, he didn't do any research at all. You know. <laughs> Sorry. You don't have you don't have to know things to write books about them. <laughs> oh yeah, this is true. And, and to be an expert. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And since when do you look like George Clooney? Oh, have you seen the? Um, Picture of the uh, day we had the whole pe everybody here and formed Irva. Yeah. I'm standing in the back row, and if you look, it's I look just like George Clooney with the mustache and, and everything else. Uh, well, um, already then. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure George will be happy to know that next time you bump into him. Yeah, or he looks like me or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, since. I, I think he's younger. It's probably going to be that way. Yeah. Uh, um. Actually, we have another viewer who's here. Oh, good. Sneaked in the back door. Let me unmute him. Now, first, I guess I have to make him a panelist. Mr. Trela, hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How about yourself? Yeah, I just got from work and I was lucky enough to be able to join uh, the meeting. I forget, are you in Texas? No, I'm in San Jose, California. <laughs> Where? San Jose. San Jose. San Jose, okay. All right, well, I saw you had put a, tw uh, you texted a question in about set asides and I brought your session up. We looked at your session a little while ago, uh -huh. and it was a long one, as I recall. Do you have any comments about it other than the set-aside question you put in? Anything about your session you want to discuss? or? Uh, you know what? I did it yesterday at night and a little bit in the morning, so I would have just to go through it. But I'm just, you know, I have, like, a really busy schedule, and, you know, a couple of last days were really crazy. And, you know, when I... Uh, I exchanged a couple of emails with Lori. She said that basically when you do the set aside thing, sometimes people do not do it properly, and then right. you have, you know, during the session a lot of pollution. And I can tell that you know this is happen happens to me really often. So I would like just to know what's like the most common mistake that most of like beginning uh, uh, students do. And you know maybe like a couple of ideas how to do it properly or you know what kind of additional tricks or you know use to get this extra focus just to set those set those things aside to be able to do it you know better. The well, most common mistake that no, go ahead. The most common mistake that all beginning students make is they try to identify the target. Mm-hmm. And do you understand, or do you have the what we call the set aside mantra down? Do you know what you're supposed yeah. to say and how you're supposed yeah, to say yeah, it? Yeah. Yes, yes. You're I'm good, good with that. Yeah, I'm good, but you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. <clears throat> well, we were looking at your session, and uh, you know, there are a lot of pages here. But when you did your interim summary, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of your perceptions would be scored as yeses. Mm hmm So maybe you should I should let you talk some more if you have questions that are going to come out from just talking questions within the questions. Mm -hmm. So you think because I didn't see the uh, the feedback yet. This is this is. Oh, space. here we go. This. There you go. Here's some of it. Um, it was a an annual dance competition in Beijing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this was all in one day, but there were just scores and scores and tons of dancers there with different routines. And so, you know, if you're picking up man-made and stuff, it will be very, very difficult. YouTube has a lot of videos of the various dancers and dance troops and routines. But, um, you know, they would all virtually have a different man-made or theme 
that they're building around. So there could be all kinds of perceptions coming in about that. But the event itself, you can see the cultural and it's very colorful. And Lynn says that a lot of viewers are picking up water there and there's a lot of wavy motion. So that could possibly lead a person to think that it's water. And we're not trying to waffle. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But uh, in an event like this, it's hard to get all the feedback. But um, uh, Lynn, do you want anything you want to jump in here with? Granted, uh, well, this is only part of the yeah, feedback. It's very common when there's rhythmic motion or uh, this one we don't usually talk about. When it's open sand dunes in the open desert like the Sahara, people will identify it as water uh, because it has the wave motion or the wave shape. They just assume that it's water. And when you go describing it, that's, you know, if you can free yourself from saying it is water and you can say it's water like, that's when you. Uh, uh, that's when you free yourself up to uh, to you know start describing it, and like the open sand dunes, you start finding out that this water um, is gritty, dry, <laughs> very hot, things like that. Or when it's motion, you find out that the uh, uh, water, instead of being wet, is rhythmic and things like that. And uh, like I say, one of the biggest problems is that people try to identify rather than describe. And if you can get the understanding that when you get a gestalt in phase one, it doesn't say it's water, it says it is water E. And then you go describing how is it water E, that'll get you back on target. And so uh, um, it's it's a very common mistake, and it's something we all do. And I mean, even uh, even when you have viewers that have been working for twenty and twenty five years, they make the same mistake. So it's not something you have to be ashamed of or worry about. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of those mistakes you're going to make it no matter what. So you know live with it learn to laugh about it and uh, and just learn to describe instead of identify and I'm just scrolling down I went through Russ found these YouTube videos and so um, I mean there's everything here from a training exercise and this is all the competition a folk dance um, Esmeralda uh, a classical dance. Here's one where they're using, oh, somebody, I think it was Russ, got the umbrellas and parasols. And here's um, red is red, green is green. And it looks like they're using um, umbrellas, like Japanese. Yeah, that one is a target that we use a lot of times in class, uh -huh. uh, generally in the advanced class. And um, when they put the umbrellas up, it's at a uh -huh. generally a Sorry, three point advantage, and uh, people will describe it as mountains. One thing about all of these Chinese uh, dance demonstrations and talent demonstrations and all that, they can outperform, I think, anybody in the world.
Yeah, there, um, while we're watching that, there are a lot of mistakes, well, like, uh, like slumps that you go through and mistakes that you make in remote viewing and trying to identify the target, getting trapped by tons and tons of stray cats and AOLs and all. These things are going to happen if you're remote viewing. I mean, they're going to happen, period. And so basically what you learn to do is you learn to laugh at them rather than beat yourself to death over them. And you say, hey, what can I learn about myself from doing that? And, uh, and it teaches you a lot about yourself, about the way your mind works. And getting back to what we were talking about earlier, that changes a lot of paradigms. Uh, and, you know, when you start thinking of yourself differently, you start realizing the truth about yourself. And, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the things you've been fooling yourself on your whole life, you see for the truth and uh, and you learn a lot and that's the purpose of the practice sessions is to learn something about yourself so when you have these problems don't beat yourself up over it enjoy the fact that you're having the problem because it's time for you to learn something new and use it as a, as a uh, learning situation but above all don't beat yourself up over these things And uh, while you were talking, I went ahead and showed a couple of those videos, and there was dry ice there. Did you see that? No, I didn't. Uh. Yeah, there were dry ice, and there was a, one of the groups using the parasols. Um, and I see we have... Um, oh, and actually, we should go back to that session, too, and see if he had any more questions. Um, Lynn talked about writing out word associations in P5, and so finally the thing that's bothering you stop doing that. Yeah. That's one of the forms of, of phase five. Right. We're going to go into phase five. We're going to go into a phase five discussion tomorrow night. Yep. And uh, phase five can be a really powerful tool in your remote viewing, whether it's controlled remote viewing or any other form of remote viewing. The... Uh, the principles of the P5 tools um, can really help you understand yourself, what's going on in your mind, and can help you understand an awful lot about the target. So uh, uh, Jed is going to be working, um, you know, talking about the uh, P5 stuff. I'm just going to be sitting in. And, Actually, uh, David, Jed's doing the uh, aperture David. interview. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, David. That's all right. Uh, I've got Jed on my mind. He's been trying to reach me today. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so uh, tomorrow uh, David will be talking about some tools that you can use whether you're in CRV or not. Very useful. Graham brought up um, reflecting in session like how the, is this AOL created or related to me seems to pull me off target but helps to learn about AOL formation better than trying to figure out after the session, is this true or what? Now, P5 exercises are conscious mind activity. So you're not viewing when you do those. Yeah. When you're, in, when you're doing using one of the P5 tools, you take a break. Basically, you take a mental break from the session. It's called in-session analysis. And... Um, you want to never analyze while you're viewing. And so these P5 tools, you actually take a mental break and say, okay, I'm not viewing now. I'm going to analyze what just went on. When you figure out what just went on, then you say, okay, I'm going back to viewing now. And you stop analyzing, which is a mental discipline that you just have to learn. And it is uh, 10.13 Eastern Time. And Kristen's asking tomorrow night where to discuss Phase 5. Right back here, 8 p.m. Same yeah. time, same station. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I think 
we probably ought to wrap it up. Any last questions? And um, I'm sorry you got here so late. We're just looking at your session now. I mean, we did look at it before, but do you have any more questions? Yeah, actually, I have one sure. last question. Go ahead. You know, because sometimes when I'm doing, you know, phase two, I get extra uh, guest stars. How uh -huh. should I write them properly? Do I just write, you know, like uh, man-made and, uh, you know, and go go with uh, with perceptions, or or should I do it differently? I remember it's supposed to be done slightly different, maybe, but uh, you know, I don't really like. I don't yeah, actually, how. if you like get a gestalt, like biological or land or something like that, one of your gestalts mm -hmm. in phase two, you just write it in with the rest of the descriptors. Um, anything that you have an ideogram for, you can use as a descriptor in phase two. Now the thing is, if you recognize it as a gestalt, then you may want to turn right around and cue yourself with it and find out. You know, you get, okay, people. You write it down as people, if you have an ideogram for people, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, then you kind of cue yourself with it and say, oh, well how about I describe these people? And uh, and it actually helps, but when you get a gestalt in phase two, you write it down just like you would anything else. Mm -hmm. You so don't have to set it aside or anything. Yeah. So so I don't need to put like an ideogram for it on the side or no. I just do myself with the uh, with the, the description, yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay, well, um, off topic. Lynn, have you had any time to look at Kristen's book? She's just checking. I have. I haven't had the chance to read it. I think she sent me a thing like two or three months ago uh, uh, asking me to, you know, tell her what I thought about the book. And when I do that, I try to do for other people what I had people do for me, and that is to write a critique of it. And I've been kind of working on it for a couple of months now. And, um, you know, life is full of interruptions these days and also, uh, so it's building over time. Basically, the bottom line, great book. But I know, you know, when when I ask somebody to review my book, I don't want them to come back and say great book or something like that. I want them to come back and say, "Hey, you misspelled a word on you know in the third line on page 97 and stuff like that." Uh, and you know if there's something they disagree with, then come back and give me their logic and their understanding and all that, so I can learn something and I can learn something about my book. Uh, Oh, uh, and I just can't finish it. Basically, like I say, the bottom line <laughs> that I always hate to get uh, is great book. Well worth reading. Okay. Uh, she says, uh, thank you. No need to spend your time critiquing it. Okay. All right, folks, uh, we really need to wrap this up. And um, I'm so glad all of you could come. And uh, hopefully we're getting those recordings. I mean, you can still access this one. Hopefully when they're all housed on Aesthetic Impact, they'll come through. And we'll be, we won't have lost much of the translation or the file swapping or whatever. So anyway, we will see some of you tomorrow night probably. And the next target of the week is in two weeks. Keep checking AIIS.webex.com, and that will give you your coordinates. And if you want front loading, uh, we I've scheduled a project coming up, which I think uh, if some of you want to participate, you'll get to see what it's like to be a, one of a group contributing to a question that somebody asked. And it's kind of interesting, and we'll put that out there for the experience as well. So. Anyhow, uh, anyway, just keep checking for coordinates and 
the schedule and we'll sneak in um, a couple extra discussions. We have P5 exercises coming up tomorrow night. I've got a couple of people in the queue that I want to get on board with summary writing or how to write a professional report so that you're not just driving your analyst crazy or your project manager. Or your and, customer. <laughs> uh, 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 well, the customer, it'll be fixed by the time the customer gets it, but you're killing the project manager in between. Well, if you don't yeah. have a project manager or something like that and yeah. you're just, you know, doing something like for the police or something, or yeah. just somebody wants to get some information so they ask you for help, um, uh, you want to give them something that's readable, that's in their own language, and so on. So anyway, that's the discussion for the summary round. Uh -huh. And um, another one, I want to do a little discussion just on move commands as well, and how to document those in structure, and how to cue yourself, and such like that. So keep watching as, as I can get them scheduled, I will. So thanks, everybody, and we thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.